Creatives of color, which means not white. I don't really want to make a big fancy video about this. So I'm just going to do this in one run and post it unedited without all the fun stuff. One of the reasons that I don't market my production business to people, um, just in general, is that it's kind of a pain. Um, there's a vastly flooded market of people who think that they're filmmakers, but they don't really have the skills. Even if they have expensive cameras, they might have, you know, a 5D Mark IV and a really nice lens and then take pictures at ISO 128,000 despite full lighting. So there are a ton of these people and they produce stuff that might be good enough that a, <clears throat> let, let's just say a cheaper person isn't really gonna care. So they'll go with this cheap person who doesn't really charge enough money to run an actual business, uh, doesn't take into account replacement costs of the equipment, and so on and so forth. When you run a business with this equipment, it's going to take a beating. You're going to drop stuff once in a while. Things are going to get scratched. Things are going to get smashed. Bad things happen to the equipment. Eventually, they just break. So you do have to replace it. You have to pay all the uh, taxes, fees, whatever. You know, there's, there's all these costs. So there's this just this massive influx of people who get a fancy pants camera, you know, <clears throat> or two cameras and maybe some lights and maybe some audio gear, and they might do a mediocre job at best, but, you know, uh, they get it done. It may not be great, but they get it done. The problem is those people, because there's so many of them, it makes it harder for people to make choices as to who to get to do video stuff, but also it drives the rates of the overall market down. <clears throat> we had the same problem with computer repair people in the 2000s, early 2010s. Um, Craigslist was infested with people who thought they could do computer repair. And it's a problem that doesn't fully go away, but the thing is, it seems like a lot of those people finally grew up um, the whole computer repair thing, you know, oh, I can make some beer money doing computer repair, that kind of went away. It, it, it is not gone. There are still services that devalue skilled computer people, but they don't seem to be succeeding. A lot more people have understanding of business and business acumen than they used to in that field. Um, but when it comes to video business, as far as I can tell, there's still a pretty serious lack of that understanding. So the price is a problem, um, but it's not the only problem. See, I started the video business a couple of years ago, <clears throat> and <laughs> yeah, the price was a problem back then, but I've done several jobs. I, I still do jobs today. I had a video shoot fairly recently for a couple of music videos. Um, but I can't do some of these jobs at the rate some of these people are asking for. See, in my computer business, if I come out to your house or your business or whatever, you're probably on the hook for a minimum of $140 if I drive out there and stay for 20 minutes. And my, my going rate is $160 an hour plus trip charges for computer stuff. So video stuff, the rates are lower. Um, they're not a lot lower, but they are lower because the video stuff, it's, it's not the same field. People can't afford to pay as much for video as they can for computer repair. Once a computer's fixed, it tends to work for a long time. Once a video's done, it tends to not be very useful beyond whatever that was shot for, and that's it. Videos don't have high reuse value. But the kind of stuff I do usually doesn't require a lot of people, a lot of equipment. I'm not running a big business. I'm just running really a one-man show with occasional help, but pretty much a one-man show. Here's the problem. This is basically why I've stopped even bothering trying to get the word out there that I do video production. 
it's one thing when you already have the forces of a bunch of amateurs that are willing to, that have no overhead because they're not running a business properly, um, that are willing to go out and buy expensive equipment and not charge the proper prices. It's bad enough because then they're skimming all of that relatively easy work off, not doing a very good job, but they're setting the price expectations accordingly. And it's a problem with all the artistic fields. But the new thing, the new thing is it is now okay and just there's a huge chunk of society that now thinks it's okay to basically say if you are certain identity groups, you shouldn't be allowed to work or you should be preferentially disallowed from working. When I say certain identity groups, I explicitly mean straight heterosexual, straight, white, Caucasian, and male, men, boys, whatever. You'll notice I'm white and male, and I'll tell you that I'm straight. So I pretty much tick all those boxes, but now here's the problem. They don't come out and say, we don't want straight white men. I'm going to show you an ad from Triangle Filmmaking Community by Debbie View. And yes, yes, you posted this publicly. You don't get to complain about the fact that I took your public post and I said this is a problem. Debbie View says, Hello, blah, 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 blah. Gig for talented and resourceful DP for a day of video interviews. They need to have their own gear, including lighting and a two camera setup. And so you already got two bodies, two lenses lights, maybe reflectors, probably microphones, she didn't even mention that, <clears throat> and uh, here, here's the pay, 300 a day. Not great, really not great. That if, if, I'm, if I'm being paid $300, I better be shooting video, you know, for a few hours at most and leaving. But here's where it gets sinister. Creatives of color, which means not white, Fem identifying creatives, which means not men, and LGBTQIA plus creatives, which means not straight, are highly encouraged to apply. And in case you need proof, here, if the camera will show it to you, is the ad full of more effects and everything, but there's the ad. Debbie View, Triangle Filmmaking Community, $300. And if you are straight, white, and male, don't bother. This is racist and sexist and bigoted, but it's okay. It's casual, you see. It, it's not, they're not excluding, they're being inclusive. This is exclusion through inclusion. So what is the difference between saying no straight white males and saying we want everybody from this category and this category and this category to apply when there's, you know, only one more category in each and that's it. If you basically say we want this, 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 and you leave one out, you're excluding that one through your inclusion. Inclusion can be exclusion in this way. But the problem is it presents as being inclusive. It presents as going, well, these people are not usually given the ability or the opportunity the way that these other people are, so we're trying to make sure that they apply too. But look, you're saying if you're not straight, not white, not male, we really want you to apply. You may as well say no straight white males allowed. And I know, I know that there is a difference between saying that, you know, you're highly encouraged to apply um, or these are the only groups that should apply. I understand that legally, <clears throat> legally there is a difference. Practically there is not a difference. This is one of those things that these kind of people like to do. I call it straddling the gap. They like to present something that legally shows that, you know, they are, um, what they're doing is just a preference. It, it's not required. It, they're not actually excluding people. They're just telling these particular people, hey, you can apply too. But highly, 
encouraged to apply. No, you're not just doing that. We know that you're not doing that. Everyone knows when you say that they're highly encouraged to apply or even just encouraged to apply, the fact that you need to call them out and say, we want you to apply, it implicitly is excluding. It is exclusive of those other identity groups. So I got tired of this crap because this happens on these video posts all the time. All these various filmmaking, video production, Facebook groups, constantly people are posting jobs and those jobs will say something like that. They'll have something to do with, you know, oh, we, we want people that are of these groups to apply. Uh, you know, we want people, people of these groups are, you know, in some way being given preference. It's always to the exclusion of males and or white and or straight people. Always. It's just flat out, it, it may even be illegal, but at the very least it's unethical and to me it's immoral, morality subjective, but to me it's immoral. If you're hiring a director of photography, it does not fucking matter what they look like, what's between their legs, and who they want to fuck. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that they can make this thing right here work. They can turn this light up here on, point it correctly, you know, get the audio right. It matters what they can do. It doesn't matter who they are. You're hiring them for what they can do. And I have a major problem with this, and I got tired of it. So this guy up here, he inspired me to start writing my own thing because he was like, wait a minute, this seems like it might be low. I'm like, yeah, it does seem pretty low, doesn't it? So I replied to this and I have yet to see a response because I just did it not that long ago. I'll read it to you. The rate is low and the explicit identity preference is racist and sexist. I could do it, but I don't want to support racism and sexism, however casual or supposedly soft. Because that's what this is. It's not a hard preference. It's a soft preference. Well, you know what the problem is? The problem is there's a preference. The problem is that you're expressing a preference for certain types of people to apply to do this work for you. I'm not going to fly. Let's see. I still, I still don't have it. Uh, there's no response to mine, but let's find out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click it right now just to see. But I'm willing to bet that no one's going to say anything to me because people don't do that. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, no, it's even better than that. I think that Debbie View blocked me. In fact, uh -huh. that would be so typical. If Debbie View blocked me, Debbie View didn't block me though. I think she deleted the post. Huh. Okay, well, it, I think she might have deleted the post actually. And yeah, that post didn't come up. Huh. Interesting. So, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. She deleted it. She deleted the post. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. So, as far as I... I'm glad I screenshotted it because no one would believe me otherwise. This is what happens when people like this are called out for their racism, their sexism, their bigotry. When they get called out, all of a sudden they freak out. They go, oh no, oh no, we're not that. That's not correct. Sometimes they get angry or violent and, res and respond in a hostile manner. Sometimes they do what this woman did, where she was called out. And then because she was called out, she deleted it. Now there's also the possibility that she's already hired someone and that she deleted it because I called her out and she wanted my call out to go away anyway. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But... If, if there's an update, I might let you know. The bottom line is, this kind of crap needs to be called out whenever you see it. Don't let people express explicit preferences for non-acting roles 
for, for these, these crew roles, these things where it doesn't matter who you are, it matters what you do, don't let them say, oh, we only want these people, or we strongly prefer, or we highly encourage these specific categories of people, which suspiciously covers all people except straight white men, to apply. Don't let that stuff fly. The, you don't fight these battles against this identity politics crap. You don't fight and win those battles on a macro scale. You fight them on a micro scale. You call it out when you see it in small, local places. And what usually happens is the people that you call out, you if you do it right, everyone can see that they're wrong, including them. And even if they don't agree with you, they will tuck their tails and run. Because when it's called out on a macro level, they feel emboldened. People on YouTube comments, for example, you can't take it seriously because it's macro. But when it comes to, say, a local list, when it's a small region, you know, in a town or a neighborhood or a county, when it's in those localized sort of setups, and you see it, and you call it out, it's much more personal. This is someone who's like 30 miles or less away. This is someone that could be in your community. This is someone that might know other people you know. So when they call you out, there's some degree of connection there. And it's through those little call-outs that you make a difference. So if you want to stop this identity politics creep, do it on the local, small level. Don't waste your time making stupid YouTube videos like this guy right here that complain about racism and sexism on a big level because you can't make big changes, but you can make changes right here at home. And I encourage you to do so, and I encourage you to call it out when you see it. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be, like, you don't have to be indirect about it either. You can find a middle ground between being a rude asshole and being a little pussyfoot who doesn't want to address the issue head on. There is a center there where you can be firm, but not a dick. And you should do that. I hope that this has been helpful. I would love, if you're watching this right now, I would love it if you could share your experiences in the comments. I would really appreciate that. This is Jody Bruchon signing off turning off the camera, and not doing interviews for racist people. Have a good one.